Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online regulation F VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'll be showcasing one of the most unique teams that I've tried out so far in the regulation F format. This team features support Pokemon like Lightclay, Dual Scream, Sableye, as well as Floral, Heal, and Comfy, and the idea is that you use those Pokemon to enable some very powerful and unique attackers. You've got Sword Dance, Water, Ogre Pond, Nasty Plot, Galarian, Moltres, Clear Amulet, Glastrier, and a very interesting Archaldon with Scope Lens as well as Focus Energy, and the idea is that you can just crit infinitely with it after setting up Focus Energy. This team is just absolutely wild. A lot of these Pokemon see very little usage in the format, and even those that do see usage like Archaladon are generally built in a pretty different way. This team did super well in the second global challenge, and I knew I had to try it out because it just has so many crazy tricks. And so, as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battle, check out the timestamps down in the description below. And thanks so much, as always, for joining me. If you enjoy, would really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like in the video or subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a ton. Anyway, let's dive into things. If you're interested in trying out the team in-game, the rental code is on the screen, and there's also a paste for it down in the description below. As I mentioned, this team has so many crazy surprises, and it is heavily centered around using Sableye to set up dual screens, enabling a lot of powerful attackers. You've got Nasty Plot, Citrus Berry, Galarian Moltres, the Scope Lens Archaladon, which is meant to set up Focus Energy, and then Spam Draco Meteor, Clear Amulet Glastria, which has incredible type coverage across so many Pokemon in the format, and Glastria in particular is really slow, but you can solve for that with this team. Team because Sableye has Quash, and so the idea is that Sableye can just Quash something and Glastra can knock it out before they even have a chance of moving, and then a classic Swords Dance Water Ogre Pond. Comfy is really unique and is able to heal up all of these Pokemon, so the idea is that between screens and setting up, a lot of people will spend multiple turns damaging the Pokemon on this team, but then you can just bring out Comfy and then heal them back up with a Floral Healing. So, so many unique things to talk about here, let's break each individual Pokemon down. Just for some quick context, this team was originally built for the second Global Challenge, which was an online best of one tournament that took place in the beginning of March, and it finished in 75th place. These tournaments are incredibly difficult, and this is easily one of the most creative teams from that event as well, so just wanted to provide some context because a team like this is so powerful in the closed team sheet best of one environment. The first Pokemon we have to talk about on this team is Sableye. Sableye is awesome because it gets access to Prankster as well as Light Screen and Reflect. Now, you might be thinking, well, Grimmsnarl gets access to all of those too, right? But Sableye is also part dark and part ghost typing. It's a really unique typing because it allows you to, one, be immune to prankster taunts from things like Tornadus and Thunderous, and it gives you immunity to Fake Out, which is a huge deal. For example, one of the biggest problems that Grimmsnarl struggles against is getting hit by Fake Out on turn one and then getting knocked out immediately before a screen is able to get set up. With Boy, it's so much harder to deny the screens on turn one, and that makes this team so much harder to fight against. You also have Quash, which is a really nice move, which forces your opponent to move last, and that's really really valuable because when you use slower Pokemon like Glastria, for example, you're able to just quash your opponent, prevent them from moving, and Glastria can just threaten something with the knockout immediately. So Sableye is one of the primary support Pokemon on this team, and you're just max HP, max special defense here. The second one is Comfy. Comfy is awesome for two reasons on this team. The first is the more obvious one, which is that you're able to just use Floral Healing to heal up all of your teammates. That goes a really long way with this team because Pokemon like Moltres and Archaladon can really soak up a lot of hits, and once Sableye has set up screens, you can switch out into Comfy and then use Comfy to heal up those Pokemon after they've already absorbed a lot of damage. This Comfy also has Calm Mind, which is really unique. I think Calm Mind is one of those moves where Comfy just doesn't really have anything else it really wants to do. For example, you could replace it with Trick Room, but with Calm Mind, you turn Comfy into something that actually can become an offensive threat as well. It's often that this Comfy just stays on the field for multiple, multiple turns, is able to slowly get Calm Mind boost and then actually threaten with reasonable damage afterwards. Now, of course, you're primarily using this Pokemon, I would say, for Floral Healing, but don't underestimate potentially setting up on Pokemon that just have no way to really deal with Comfy. These are the two support Pokemon in this team, and the rest of the team revolves around heavy offense. I would say that in the majority of games, I bring both Sableye and Comfy and then pick two of four between Moltres, Archaladon, Glastria, and Ogre Pond. Moltres is the first Pokemon to talk about here. This is the standard nasty plot set. Galarian Moltres is a Pokemon that saw a lot of success in Sword and Shield, and it is not as commonly used today, but it's just a really bulky Pokemon, and when you add screens with that and Citrus Berry with Berserk and Healing from Comfy, this Pokemon can be really difficult to deal with. I've had games where Moltres' Berserk gets activated, and then the Citrus Berry heals you up, and then you activate Berserk again, and then Comfy just continues to heal up Moltres, and it's just a huge nuisance to deal with, and a lot of people, if they lead, for example, Rillaboomer and Cinder, 
Poison or a Fake Out into Moltres, you can just slowly start setting up. This Pokemon really capitalizes against passive positions, and it's not uncommon for you to get multiple nasty plots off in a game. The second Pokemon is Archaladon here. This is a fascinating set, and no one I've seen has really used Archaladon like this. What this Archaladon does is you are able to get unlimited crits essentially but with a combination of scope lens and focus energy the idea is that after focus energy your moves will always crit and that's really really nice because draco meteor obviously is a move that normally after you use once you're just dealing so much less damage but with the combo here you just keep ignoring the special attack drops which is really nice also getting guaranteed crits on flash cannon is awesome helps out against a lot of different pokemon like fairy types or fairy terra such as fairy terra fluttermane or fairy terra raging bull uh, of course a lot of people use fairy terra to get around dragon type attacks and so our child can punish those pokemon by going for flash cannons this our child is super super bulky it's very indexed heavily on hp and special defenses as you can see and the main idea behind that is you are already dealing a lot of damage once you get those critical hits and so you want to just be able to tank attacks from for example flutter main a little bit better since our child special defense is not that great most people normally use assault vest on our child but you obviously can't with this set and so as a result to compensate for it, it has a lot more evs in hp and special defense the final two Pokemon are Water Ogre Pond. This is relatively straightforward, but the main thing to call it is that it's actually really slow and has a ton of defensive investment, so it gives you a better matchup into physical attackers, but be careful because as a result, you will be slower than things that you might normally expect to be faster than, things like Urshifu, Chiyu, Landorus, just to name a couple. The final Pokemon here is Clear Amulet Glastriere. I have also not really seen anyone use Glastriere in this format, but this thing can be an absolute menace in the right matchup. First of all, it just has so much good type coverage between Ice School Crash, High Horsepower, and Heavy Slam. You think about your common Pokemon that are used these days, Rillaboom, Incineroar, Raging Bolt, Fluttermane. Well, Glastriere has a good matchup against all of those and can threaten all of them with a potential one-hit knockout. In addition, with Clear Amulet, especially in the closed team sheet environment, you're really able to catch Incineroar's off guard, and that goes a really long way, since normally the way to beat Glastra is to just make sure that it can't really do that much damage. But with this set, you can really combo Chilling Nay quickly and snowball the game out of control. And like I mentioned earlier, because you have Quash on Sableye here as well, you're able to actually potentially slow something down and just knock it out before they can even move, and that's really nice because it solves for Glastra's speed problem. By the way, Glastra is also just really naturally slow, so you can bring this Pokemon into Trick Room matchups because it often will actually be faster than Pokemon that are used on Trick Room compositions like Blood Moon or Saluna or Furigraph, for example. So in terms of ways of playing with the team, I almost always lead Sableye. Like you have to have a very good reason to not lead Sableye. And to be honest, I haven't found that reason yet. So I always lead Sableye and I'll go with one of the main attackers, right? Moltres, Archaladon, Glastro, Ogre Pond. You can go Sableye comfy, but this is relatively passive. And if you're doing that, you're going all in on basically setting up Calm Mind. So I generally would advise against it. But if your team opponent's team looks really, really, really weak against comfy, then maybe you can do it. But otherwise it's normally Sableye, one of these four, comfy in the back, and then one of the remaining three sweepers that I haven't picked as the final slot. So that's a general framework for how you can use the team. In terms of weaknesses, I wanted to list a couple of things that I ran into while practicing with this team that gave me trouble. The first one is Fire Ogre Pond. Nothing on this team resists Fire Ogre Pond unless you Terra, and so I've had games where I thought I was in a good spot. Say boy, I set up screens and fire ogre pond was still doing so much damage across the board if you look at this team your best way of really threatening fire ogre pond is water ogre pond here and i had one game where i had set up screens and i was like okay water ogre pond's out now but then my opponent had tornadoes plus fire ogre pond reflect was up light screen was up and bleak wind plus woodstorm was still enough to knock out ogre pond whether or not i tear out right and so that caused me huge amounts of issue uh, so fire ogre pond's one example dark urshifu i think can be really tough for this team as well if you don't position comfy improperly uh, for example i had games where I either didn't bring Comfy or Comfy went down early and then I was like oh okay you know I've set up our Chaladon it's got all these boosts or uh, I've set up Glastria or Ogre Pond for example and then Dark Urshifu comes out just ignores Reflect goes for Dark Terror and Wicked Blow just knocks me out when I've taken a little bit of chip damage as well so that's another Pokemon that's been a little bit scary to go up against. A third Pokemon that I've actually lost against a couple of times is Whimsicott. Whimsicott can be annoying especially in best of one when you don't know its moveset and I've lost for different reasons for example one practice game I lost because they had Encore, I Terra Galarian Mold in front of a flutter main went for nasty plot and then it just got on court on the second turn i also played against a team that had whimsicott terrakion with grass terror terrakion and indity in the back and this team actually felt like it had no way to beat it basically because they just went grass terror immediately beat up immediately uh you know the ogre pawn on this team isn't even fast and so terrakion just outpaced it rocks i was doing so much damage across the board i brought out archaladon but it was already too late because i didn't have time to set up with it and then they brought out indity set up psychic terrain so i couldn't even go for quash with sableye for example and so uh, that was like another combination with 
Whimsicott that I really struggled against. Uh, and then finally, some moves like Snarl and Taunt can be really annoying. Uh, Taunt, I think, can be tricky because it prevents you from getting some of the setup with Pokemon like Moltres and Ogre Pond. Obviously, getting taunted on Sableye or Comfy can feel really bad. And then Snarl can be pretty annoying for Moltres in particular. Had one game where my opponent had Choice Scarf Chiyu and they just kept clicking Snarl. And then they also had like a Choice Band Dragonite with Extreme Speed next to it and they were able to just do a lot of damage across the board. My initial idea was to set up with Moltres, but because it kept getting Snarled, I wasn't doing that much damage and taking a lot more damage in return. Uh, one last thing to think about is also if you just like don't really time your healing properly. Uh, I think with this team, I've had games where I've lost where I just either don't bring in Comfy or don't bring in Comfy soon enough. And as a result, my Pokemon just take way too much damage. And if you bring in Comfy too late, then it feels really bad because Comfy generally, I would say, is not the most valuable Pokemon unless you're going up against something that's super weak to Fairy slash Draining Kiss. So timing when you get Comfy out on the field is really critical when you use this team as well. But yeah, those are just a couple of things that I wanted to mention. I think the last thing to call out, by the way, is that Sableye can just be a sitting duck because this thing has no attacks. And so once Sableye set up both screens, you can capitalize off that saying, okay, it's very likely it's going to want to switch out. And so like doubling up onto Sableye as you predicted to switch out can have huge payoffs for you as well. So yeah, those are a couple things I wanted to mention. We are up against a really interesting Dondozo team here, huh? Dondozo, Tatsu, Glamora, Ursaluna, Gouging Fire, Talonflame. Whoa. Okay. So I think our Chaladon is going to be very important here because it can just crit through Dondozo and it has Grass Terra. I actually don't mind just going Sableye or Chaladon immediately here. Comfy to heal. And then what do I want outside? Like, what do I want to beat the rest of the team outside of Dondozo? Water. I don't think it's going to be Galarian Moltres here. And Glastry or Ogre Pond. I think Ogre Pond's better, especially into a Dozo matchup. They might not even bring Dozo, to be honest, but I think this feels like a game that our Chaladon can really thrive in. What's interesting about this team is that you have so many options, so it's about assessing, like, what are my best options? And it can be hard sometimes because each Pokemon is so different from the other. But in this game, to me, it's very clear-cut that our Chaladon has to come out because it has such a favorable matchup into Dondozo. I also think if you look at my opponent's team, for example, Pokemon like Talonflame, Gouging Fire... Um, they generally take a turn or two to use setup oriented moves like Talonflame with Tailwind, for example, Gouging Fire with the Howl. And so it's easier for our Chaladon in this matchup because it's not just threatened by a ton of offense immediately on turn one, right? They don't have something that can just burst me, something like a Fairy Terra Specs Moonblast from Fluttermane, for example. So as a result, it's easier to actually guarantee that focus energy. And then once that focus, focus energy is set up, for example, like I can set up a screen with Sableye, focus energy, then switch Sableye out into Comfy, protect, and then heal. It's gonna be Glamora Dozo, okay. Hmm. What do I wanna do here? You can't poison me, which is good. I'm going to light screen and focus energy turn one because I think Glamora I could see going for Meteor Beam. And yeah, I don't anticipate Dondozo staying in here because you're vulnerable to Will-O-Wisp here. So that's Ursaluna coming out. Okay. Yep, so now I can reflect next turn, which is good. And they just mortal spin, that's fine. It's very important to conserve our Terra right now with the... Um, our Chaladon. I've never seen Ursaluna on a Dondozo composition, so honestly, I think that's really fascinating to me. I wonder if it's just the typical Flame Orb set. It's not. This might be setup oriented then, okay. It's valuable information, because I think with that, I actually want to taunt it and protect here. Taunt, protect into reflect attack next turn. I don't think we need to pay, uh, play super, super fast pace right now. And I want to be a little bit patient. The, the lack of flame war makes me think, you know, maybe you are using... It's actually... I mean, I don't know what the item would be. It's my main question. That's fascinating. I'd love to bait out a Terra here, ideally. 
Oh, they actually switch. Okay, I wouldn't have anticipated that. Huh. Back out into Dozo. Okay. We protect. I taunt into you. The main question is what I want to commit the terror on to. Um, and they actually just go for power gem onto us. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I don't mind that. Now I'm happy to set up Reflect. Reflect and... Do we think they're gonna swap out? Is the question. If you swap out immediately now though, I think you're in really bad shape. So I'm happy to reflect here and actually, f well, I guess the Dondozo slot is taunted, right? So it's a free Draco into that slot. Okay, I'm not a reflect Draco here. They stay in with both, interesting. Okay, that's fine. Like this Glamora is setting up and disrupting, but I don't really care for toxic spikes or poison because of the Archaladon. I mean, look how much Draco just did. And I can keep Draco in that slot, which is huge. And they just body press, that's fine. Thanks for the defense boost. Power gem, toxic spikes, mortal spin, and a fourth move. The main thing here is I don't see how Glamora is really threatening the Archaladon if you don't have earth power. They set up both screens. I'm not gonna just quash in case you actually want to switch out into Tatsu. And Draco. Maybe it was also acceptable to quash and just like uh, flash cannon into Glamora, but I'm fine going for this because I know the Dondoso slot is taunted right now and you don't have anything that switches into a Draco, right? Talonflame, Gouging Fire. Uh, this was kind of the perfect team for Archaladon to go up against. This specific Archaladon set, that is. Oh, is it Fairy Terra? That totally is. Ah, uh, okay. That's a little bit annoying, but it's fine. We bait out the Terra, which means I can just quash Flash Cannon you for a knockout next turn. Your body press isn't going to KO me. They set up Toxic Spikes again. Like, the reason I don't really care for Toxic Spikes here is because Comfy can just Floral Healing. But that was a nice play. And they just wave crash here, okay. But we survive. Good. Fascinating Dondozo. Makes sense with Glamora, right? Their their team is designed to be super disruptive by like spreading poison. Um Taunt wears off. I don't really think I need to be <clears throat> worried about this thing's damage output. You should protect here, honestly. I don't want to switch into either of these. I, I think we just give up Sableye now. I'm down to Quash and Flash Cannon Glamora here. Yep, Dozo protects. I mean, it should be a double protect if I had to guess, but let's see. Oh, nice. Okay, unexpected surprise. <clears throat> now I'm mainly curious if they have Focus Sash. Oh, they actually survive. That is very bulky. And you have a berry. Citrus. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, on a team like this, like I think it, they don't even have any offense, uh, offensive EVs. It's just very heavily invested in the defenses. But this is fine, right? It's like, I have screens still set up. So like, yeah, you've got him poison up, but how are you going to win the game quickly enough? Because now I can just bring out the Ogre Pawn. And like Fairy Terror is annoying, but like that's why the Dragon Fairy coverage, Dragon Steel coverage is so nice because now I just hit you for super effective with Flash Cannon. So we just double check the board state. Still a lot of turns of screens. 
I'm happy to just cudgel now into you. Flash cannon into you. Mainly I'm worried about right now is like a random crit. Other than that, I think we're in great shape. Interesting team though, for sure. I wonder if there's any chance this is Storm Drain Tatsugiri. That would be really funny. Like, Storm Drain makes a little bit of sense to redirect water type damage away, but I still really doubt that would be the case. They're switching here, though. Oh, that's just out into Ursa. Okay. Yeah, and they reveal Spiky Shield. That's fine. Like, yeah, you're getting some chip damage onto me, but the Arch Haladon is just getting so much free damage right now across the board, right? I'm not threatened by anything. I'm faster than you. I'm just launching all these attacks. Cool. The special defense drop is actually pretty handy because without it, I would potentially want to click Draco into it, but with it, it's just a free flash cannon for a KO. Like, I'm happy to just call Joanne flash cannon here. The reality is they have no way to deal with our child on, I think, especially since they already gave me a defense boost. And I also have Comfy in the late game to just, like, bring it out and start healing myself up again. So, yeah. Really, really don't mind this spot right now. Spiky Shield, Power Gem, Mortal Spin, Toxic Spikes. Okay, they just stay in with both, so this should just be a double knockout. I think their team is just a little bit too slow paced, and that's exactly the kind of team that our Chaladon wants to go up against, right? Where you just don't have enough time to win the game, and our Chaladon is able to just set up and just start spamming attacks here. A team like my opponents really relies on spreading that poison, and the Archaladon being immune to Glamora's poison is so, so big here. And I was never really worried that much about, like, I think what makes their matchup even harder is that I have Comfy for healing. Like, Comfy hasn't even hit the field, right? But I haven't, uh, I was never really that worried knowing that I had Comfy in the back. So, they just bring Dozo Tatsu. Yeah. Not Storm Dream. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, they only win off a crit. I wish I had follow me here. I still have three turns of reflect, which is perfect. So I'm down to just switch out into Comfy now. I think committing Grass Terra here is fine. Uh, Grass Terra is one of the best defensive Terras you can have against on Dozo. We saw Body Press, Wave Crash, right? Like... Uh, with this Terra, even if you crit an attack, you should not knock me out. The main thing I want to avoid here is that you have Earthquake as your last move, and you crit Earthquake into our Chaladon, because I'd actually lose the game off that. But with this, I think we should just have the game locked up. And Comfy is always going to beat the Tatsugiri 1v1, because we just have Draining Kiss, right? Um... I guess I, I shouldn't say always, because Draining Kiss actually doesn't necessarily do that much damage. You can theoretically survive, get an Accuracy drop with Muddy Water... Yeah, they just protect here, but that's fine. Like, it baits out my Terra, but I don't really care. Um, because, once again, your Dondozo should not have any move that deals enough damage to KO me, even with the crit now that we've turned into grass. And so now what I can do is just go for Floral Healing. And then Flash Cannon. Light Screen wears off, but that's fine. Reflect is more important, and we still have two turns of that. So, Floral Healing here. And Flash Cannon here. I'd say, uh, like, Dondozo is really the perfect matchup for Archaladon here. But Archaladon is also really good into just, like, a little bit more... The uh, teams that are just a little bit more passive, right? So, yeah, they go for Body Press, and that barely does anything. Beautiful. I, this Pokemon legitimately would 1v6 my opponent's entire team. It's just an awful matchup, honestly. And uh, the... Uh, approach that they ended up taking, I think, put them in a tough spot as well, because they never really threatened our Chalodon with damage, really from the beginning of the game. But if you look at their team, they just really had nothing for this Pokemon, quite frankly. And, yeah, their, their you know, their Dondozo playstyle here is very slow-paced, uh, which we really get to capitalize off of because of the crits. So, this set is just so unique and so fun. Down to Calm Mind here, and Draco. 
Yeah, like the only way Tatsu can knock out Archaladon here is if you go for Draco Meteor, but if you Draco, then uh, you're just at minus two for the rest of the game, and then you should never be able to win against Comfy. They actually protect, so I get to call mind off, which is nice. And yeah, normally with these teams, like it makes sense that like, they don't have choice scarf on the Tatsugiri because protect is actually really valuable to win off poison. But now I get to showcase Calm Mind on Comfy, which is also really fun. So this game has gone on for a while, but to be honest, I don't think there was a single turn where I was like super, super concerned. Um, the Archaladon just had full control really from turn one and was never threatened remotely throughout the course of this battle. Now, what's interesting is in a best of three, right, knowing I'm Grass Terror, I think what my opponent could do is bring out the Talonflame or the Gouging Fire to threaten me with super effective damage. I'm also just really curious about the Ursa Luna set. Like, I have no idea what it was running without Flame Orb. But now I get Draining Kiss, and that alone does 60%, which is awesome. Cool. They go for Muddy Water, looking for that Accuracy drop. But, once again, with... Our child on never being poisoned, we were never at too much risk here. And Draco secures the KO here. Wonderful. So yeah, I don't know. I'd like it's this team has so many creative parts, and I'm really happy to showcase how good our child on can be. Um, examples of other passive teams where you can like use this teams, for example, like I think like you can really set up in front of things like Rillaboom and Incineroar because normally they want to go for like fake out or parting shot, uh, but you don't really care about your boosts on our child. I'm sorry, you don't care about your stats because once you get the um, scope lens or sorry, once you get the focus energy, Draco just crits everything right uh, against Pokemon that maybe want to take a turn to set up speed control like Tornadus and Frigraph our Chalodon can set up against as well. So this was like the absolute best scenario to showcase how good our Chalodon could be. Uh, but there are a lot of more meta teams that I think our Chalodon can also really thrive against. Okay, we've got Incineroar, Rillaboom, Landorus, Flutter, Urshifu, all pretty standard, and then a Snorlax. I actually randomly ran into a Snorlax while practicing with this team, and I got demolished by it because I had no idea what to expect from it. That set had, like, Heavy Slam, Facade, Citrus Berry, and I never knew whether or not it was running, like, a setup-oriented move. Uh, Sableye, I think, is a must-lead here because it gives us immunity into Double Fake Out and can give us Light Screen immediately or Reflect. Glastrier actually looks awesome here, no? We clear Amulet. I just don't know if I want to lead it, but, like, it honestly puts on so much of awesome suppression right from turn one. So I'm thinking about it. I think I could lead our Chaladon here, too. Calm Mind Comfy. Not that great. Moltres is solid here, honestly. Mainly thinking about bringing Comfy for healing. I don't know. Thinking about Glastrier. I think Landorus scares me the most as a lead. Okay, I'm going to go with Moltres. Glastrier in the back. I don't hate our Chalodon as the fourth, but Water Palm might be a little bit safer to bring here. I'm bringing our Chalodon because I think if they lead Rilla in Sin, I can easily switch our Chalodon in. And for example, if they don't immediately pivot out with U-Turn, Parting Shot, or a hard switch, then it's a free opportunity to just set up with Focus Energy on turn two. We're going to go with in Sin plus Flutter. Okay. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm happy to just light screen here. Let's see what booster. I'm hoping for speed here. Okay, nice. I feel like so many flutters are speed booster these days, so let's just set up light screen turn one. And just protect. Protect is fairly obvious, but I still don't mind going for it. Although what this means is instead of clicking fake out onto Moltres, they could flare blitz slash knock off and dazzling gleam. Yeah, they didn't click fake out. Mm. Maybe a missed opportunity to then just poison Terra nasty plot immediately. Oh, they actually go for icy wind. Okay. That's fine. Cool. And knock off. Okay, nice. I don't mind that turn then. That is not too bad. I could reflect. I have quash. Nasty plot. Um. 
I'm honestly thinking about just switching out into Arch right now. Oh, I, I guess though, like, I need to get rid of Incineroar before Arch can really do much, because you can always just knock off my scope lens. Okay, I'll just reflect for now and nasty plot. But yeah, I actually think knockoff is one of the best moves you can have against this team, and my opponent's, uh, like, realizing how good it can be is uh, good awareness by them. Now, I actually really did wish I brought Comfy. I think Comfy would have been excellent to have here um, to heal. So I actually maybe should have thought about that a lot more in this matchup. Okay, I'm going to bring out Arch right now. Which would get a defense boost and protect here. I also don't mind just air slashing, honestly. But I think protect... Mm, I'm just worried that they knock off into Sableye right now. They could. They very, they very easily could. Okay, I'm actually just going to switch an air slash. I don't love how I played this early, early game, and I, I think I messed this game up by not bringing Comfy. If I had Comfy right now, I'd actually be in really good shape, because I think Moltres just becomes, like, too difficult to beat. But without Comfy and with me losing my Citrus Berry, it's actually really not that good of a spot. I do get a bunch of boosts here, though, which is nice. Let me get Air Slash. They U-turn, okay. I think that's Assault Vest then, right? But we get plus two defense immediately, which is nice. The problem is this is the perfect opportunity for Landorus Incarnate to come out in. Oh, did they not bring Landorus? They must have not. I feel like if you brought Landorus, you always switch in, in that position. Okay. That's good news for me. I think if Landorus came out here, I would be in a very losing spot immediately. I don't mind just going for Focus Energy and Fiery Wrath here, I think. Okay. I don't know. I mean, maybe I should protect and consider a Terra, but okay. Flutter protects. That's fine. Like, we're capitalizing off them playing a little bit passive. If we flinch Snorlax here, I think they honestly might just lose the game off that. I guess the main thing is I don't know what Snorlax wants to do here. That also, it took Fiery Rat super well there. It goes for Yawn. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. Leftovers, Yawn, Lax. Okay, I mean, one would presume Snorlax just protects this next turn then, right? So the question is whether or not I want to switch out right now. I think my honest answer is no, though. Uh, the way they're playing this makes it feel like Urshifu should be their final one. Which Glastria does not have the best matchup in two. So it actually is making me think about switching this out, which doesn't feel great. I'm just going to go all in on attack here, I think. Flash Cannon Wrath. Okay, that's probably instant coming out. Yeah. Don't mind that too much, I guess. We should knock out Flutter here. They just gleam. Yeah, we survive. Another stamina boost. Uh, it was a big mistake to not bring Comfy in this game. Like, if I had Comfy, this the amount of healing I'd have would just, I feel like, win me the game immediately. Oh, it's interesting. It's a, uh, not Assault Vest Ensign, and you have U-Turn. Huh. Okay, so we knock out Flutter. Yeah, because if I had Comfy, I could have just switched either slot into Comfy and just basically kept healing up. 
Mm, I, I I don't yeah I think I didn't think about comfy enough in the context of how I could use it as a healer in this game. Oh, it's also darker Shifu. Wow, comfy would have been perfect here over Glastria as the final one. Okay, uh, this is really hard to win from this spot. Then I think I mean you can just fake out into this wicked blow into this. Not much I can do. Yeah. Uh, my opponent has played this dark Urshifu endgame perfectly. To be honest, I also think in team preview, I just assumed it'd be water Urshifu, and that was a bad assumption on my end. Yeah. Don't really see an out here. Take out into me. Should be Wicked Blow into Arch. Although they didn't Terra. So because I actually survive, I do now have two Pokemon that threaten Urshifu this next turn. You can only knock out one of the two. I'm actually not surprised to not see a Terra there. I wonder if it's a defensive Terra instead. But yeah, the odds aren't looking great here. Like if I just end up eating a uh, oh wow, they suckered into Moltres. Okay, I, I could've... I'm surprised they didn't just Wicked Blow there. I mean, if we wake up here, we have a chance. Okay. They are Sash, yeah. Uh, and now we run into the syndrome of having uh, Sableye in the end game, and I'm up against two Dark-type Pokemon. <laughs> Although they went for knockoff. Okay, wait, hold on. Maybe this is doable then. I'm just so sad I didn't bring Comfy here. I think if I had Comfy over uh, Glastrid, this game would have been over uh, actually a long time ago. So, but you know, this is how you can do analysis while you're even playing a game, being like, okay, I really, one Pokemon just would have been so much more valuable throughout this entire battle. Uh, Glastrid is not necessarily bad, but I didn't position it super well. And my opponent did a really good job of bringing the most anti Glastrid Mons. Water Terra this. Draco U. Water Terra. Heavy Slam. I mean, because we have clear amulet, like, and water terra, I'm actually not too worried about Insin. And I think last year, now that I actually got lucky and woke up in a turn. Has the potential to win. If we didn't win, oh, wake up. Glass year just is, doesn't do enough, quickly enough. But, okay, wait, hold on. They're just going to give me the knockout onto Urshifu. Okay, that's huge. I hope they just click, like, parting shot here. It's knockoff. Okay. That's fine. I mean, with Sableye, then I just bring Sableye out, I taunt your Snorlax, and just high horsepower Incineroar, no? So maybe last year in the endgame is actually fine. I, d I definitely lose this game, I think, if I don't get that one turn wake, by the way. We had to get a one turn wake and hit Draco Meteor, and so the odds were not amazing for us. And we might still lose the game, honestly, but... Um, yeah, like, if we lose this, I'm very okay with it, because there's a very clear adjustment that I could make, which is just bringing Comfy. So taunt and high horsepower... And I can't quash Incineroar because it's dark type, so it's immune to prankster moves. Otherwise, I'd probably quash it. But yeah, I think knockoff is legitimately one of the best moves you can have into this team. Oh, okay, that knockoff actually is not really helpful for them at all, so I'm fine with that. All right, I mean, it's going to be a Glastrier against Snorlax endgame. Never thought I'd be having... <laughs> it's a weird thing to say in this format. Um, but I'm at plus two attack. And you're taunted. So I don't feel that bad. Okay, another attack boost. Yeah, I mean, you're leftovers, but because you're taunted, I think Ice Skull Crash maybe would be a two-hit knockout at plus two. Reflectos wear off, though. I don't really expect you to do enough damage. I'm just scared about missing Ice School Crash. Wait. It's a speed tie? Wow. 
Like, I guess that's not, like, absolutely shocking. I, I get really lucky and get a flinch there, by the way. Uh, this is so bulky, though, by the way. Like, oh, my goodness. Um, it's got to be Crash. I don't think I consider high horsepower. Okay, that did nothing. <laughs> Terra Blast. What Terra is it? Also, yeah, man, what a crazy end game. <laughs> with them speed, with us speed tying. Um, I don't think High Horsepower actually gets the knockout here. It's a pretty big trade off in terms of damage, only for 5% accuracy. It's like 90% of the time we just win the game off this, right? Yeah, they protect. So protect, Terra Blast, Yawn, Heavy Slam. Wow. Really interesting. Uh, I'm okay, though, because it means that your Snorlax never does enough damage against Clastrier to win this game. Yeah. They should always click Yawn here. Eh, they just end up forfeiting. Okay, cool. Tong was really valuable in this endgame to make sure that they could not put us to sleep with Yawn, but wow, that was such an interesting Snorlax set. Like... I, it's sort of like just picking up because it's like I played against one in practice literally just a few hours before recording this video and now I run into one so very very curious why it's seeing more usage um I'm curious what other sets people have been using because that was very different from the citrus berry set that I ran into Terra Blast in particular was a really big surprise but yeah I think we ended up winning this game but I had to get a little bit lucky to do so and if I were to play this again like I think I definitely should be bringing Comfy for one of the slots honestly Comfy over Glastro I think would have worked out fine because I think Moltres and our Chalodon had enough offense to carry this game uh, although Glasher actually ended up saving us in this end game. So I think yeah, just dropping one of those three for Comfy, though, I think would have been the right move here. Okay, we have Gouging Fire, Ting Lu, Comfy as well. Galarian, Zelptos, Rillaboom, and Thunderous. Wow. Huh. Don't love Ting Lu. Glastrier, I feel like, should be really good here. With the amount of super effective damage it threatens with. I'm honestly thinking about leading <sighs> Sableye and Glastrier. I'm a little bit worried about Gouging Fire just roaring and doing a lot of damage. Or boosting up its teammates to do a lot of damage. I don't think Comfy should be led here. I think Moltres is just pretty weak here so I don't want to bring it. Could be SD Ogre Pawn. I'm down for Sableye Glastrier. Arch in the back. Comfy fourth. I feel like Glastrier has huge carry potential in this game, but I'm mainly just worried because it's so slow. But yeah, I think my goal here is... Just set up screens and with Glastrier, just keep using super effective attacks. Ting Lu and. Okay. Mm. I think I'm fine going Reflect Protect on turn one. I could commit my Terra immediately, but I think blowing Terra this early is not great, especially because it means I become weak to Rillaboom in the back. So I'd rather just scout out for if they want to Terror or Protect on turn one. Because then I could just Quash Icicle Crash Zapdos turn two, right? Maybe they Terra Zapdos here, or Ting Lu. Mm, no Protect or Terra. Okay. Or Switch, interesting. Which meant that this could have just been Reflect Icicle Crash this turn, but I don't regret making the Protect there. Oh my goodness! Oh no. Oh, no. Um, I'm about to get cooked. Coaching. That's so cool. That's so cool. Uh, that's really, really bad news for me. Because you get that defense boost. <laughs> I might just get swept by Ting Lu. Um... I didn't respect Tinglu as an offensive option in this game, mainly because I was expecting like the Assault Vest variants that are pretty bulky, but uh, the clear solution against it would have been Water Ogre Pond here. 
I guess I'll at least quash an ice school crash and try to just knock this out. Yeah, so they just earthquake again. Let's see how much Clash Tour takes. Alright, not too bad. Looks like they get a higher roll this time, so Sable actually faints though, which is not great. High School Crash does connect though, super effective. And yeah, it's a one hit KO, okay. Could be worse, I'm glad we at least get the knockout onto Zapdos there. I'm curious if it's Scarf with coaching. Huh. I mean, you could just go out in a gouging fire now. <sighs> I think I'll bring out Comfy. Is that gouging fire? Yeah, I mean, having clear amulet here is actually huge for us. I think we commit our water terror as well. Wait, actually, do I want to? Because I think tearing our Chaladon might be the correct move. I don't know who to Terra or protect right now. And if I protect, they could theoretically howl and give this another attack boost, which gets really scary. Okay. I'm gonna Floral Healing, Terra, Crash. They Terra. Probably Teen Lu Terra, but into what type? Water. Okay. I don't mind poison. I can high horsepower you at least. I just did not expect coaching from Galarian Zapdos. That was really cool. Uh, if I had Water Pawn in this endgame, it wouldn't necessarily even be amazing, especially if they had Terror Blast on their Ting Lu, but... I don't think plus one high horsepower KOs gouging, but if it did, then that would have been worth considering. Oh, they actually heat crash in a comfy. Nice play. Terra Blast. This is KO. Oh, okay, that actually really did not do very much. Nice. But we also don't do very much to them. Hmm. I think it's okay, though. I feel like this should just be protect now and high horsepower. Should be a Salt Vest Tinglu, right? I don't think you actually scare Glastria very much here. Yeah, this is where Cl uh, Clear Amulet is huge on Glastria. Yeah, beautiful. They stomping. Good, good, good. Okay. We don't miss. That's huge. One more gets the KO. Oh my goodness, it's... What? Okay. Well, that was unexpected. Um... I think it's still fine. Do they have Comfy as their last one? Because if so, the play you make right now is you protect Ting Lu, and you switch this into Comfy. Because otherwise, you actually just lose to Glastrier. I am going to make the read that they're going to switch out into Comfy. Come on. Show me Comfy. Nice. Nice. Oh, I, I mean, I don't know if Heavy Slam actually gets the KO. I would think so, but... Can't remember the last time I've used Heavy Slam on a Glass Geron to a Comfy. Nice. Ooh, that read felt good.
that read felt very, very good. I actually think I lose the game there if I don't make that play. So, because um, like then Team Lu just gets out of control. Like policy is activated, you bring Comfy out, you just heal. Basically, I was thinking like even if they don't switch there, it's not the end of the world because then if you knock out my Comfy, I bring out our Chowadon and I can double up onto your Team Lu slot. Uh, but I figured if Comfy comes out here, like now with that weakness policy, I'm just so far behind. But uh, that was a huge play. Because now you can't heal this, and I still have Reflect, which is great. And I managed to get healing onto this. So, Protect here. You just Protected. And just High Horsepower. Feels good. Feels good. Wow, okay. That was a nice read. Um, yeah, I think that game actually could have gotten very, very bad if we didn't make that read. But, wow, Weakness Policy, Team Lu, Coaching, Galarian, Zapdos, and Support from Comfy is really scary. All right, Tornadus, Glamora, Flutter, Chew, Hyper Offense. Mm. What do I want to bring here? I don't know which Urshifu it is, but it's normally dark, which I have to be really careful about. This might be a Ogre game, honestly. Say boy, Ogre. Comfy. Low key, I do think Glashru could work here as well. I think Moltres is a little bit too slow paced. Mm, Flutter Ursh lead is really scary. Huh, I honestly really want to try Sableye Glastria or Comfy Ogre. Arch is not that great in my opinion because it like takes a turn to set up and I think it's really hard to get a free turn to set up against my opponent's team. It's so fast paced. And uh, Moltres has a lot of weaknesses here. Mm, Torn Glamora. I honestly want to go Quash High Horsepower. This Katara, though. I think the safer play, frankly, is just Light Screen Protect. But they did not go for Spiky Shield or Terra with Glamora, so I think that play actually would have worked. I just, like, would was really scared of them, like, tearing. And they bleak win. Yeah, honestly, maybe I just play too passive there. I don't know. The question is whether or not Meteor Beam knocks out Sableye, if that's where- Oh, they actually go for Mortal Spin. Oh, wow. I would not have actually expected Mortal Spin on a comp like this. Huh. Interesting. If you're going for that, I feel like maybe your Focus Sash then? Which would be really unexpected. Alright, I'll Quash my Horsepower now. They didn't respect it last turn. Sash on that would be fascinating to me. I just keep clicking Bleak Wind, okay. Don't miss. It is Sash, wow. That is really fascinating. Hmm. Wait. What? What? What is that cow? <laughs> it was not Sash. It lived on one HP and it was Citrus Berry. So it's got to be like max HP, max defense, Glamour, right? What? That's crazy. Wow, that's absolute madness. Oh my gosh. Okay, well. I mean, Tornadus probably has the Sash then, right? I can't believe that. I want to do the damage cock after this game. Like, what are the chances you survive that? What is that damage roll? Oh my gosh. Uh, I think actually in this game, I'm okay with you having Tornadus out on the field. So I'm going to quash and high horsepower again. I just can't believe Lamora survived that. What the heck? 
Bleak wind, we're finally gonna miss. I was like, okay, it makes sense if you're Sash. Oh, yeah, it looks like Sash, but nope, it was one HP Citrus Berry. That's crazy. Okay. And on these teams, like, I am almost always expect just very offensive Glamora, because its Meteor Beam is just so powerful, so it feels like a decently fair assumption to make. But that was not the case, which is shocking. Okay, let's bring out Comfy, though, because now I can just heal Glastry. If you bring out Chi I just Terra. They bring out Flutter, I also just Terra. Terra Water, Floral Healing, Heavy Slam. Do we see a Booster Energy is mainly my question right now. Yeah. Mm, okay. Speed. Okay, I'm actually a little bit less eager about that Terra play now. Wait, why do I even need a Terra? What am I talking about? They didn't bring out Chiyu. Okay, I'm just going to Floor Healing Heavy Slam. Nice. They don't switch. No Terra. Okay. Oh, wow, this is really sick. That's so smart. So it is substitute Flutter with Speed Booster. So the idea is that you poison and then you just slowly uh, stall things out with substitute. Very cool. Wow, okay. Uh, That is really tricky to fight against, huh? This, this has got to be Sash, right? I mean, I could be Covert Cloak Sash on Ursh. I almost want to Calm Mind here. And Ice Cold Crash. Hex as well? Bleak Wind misses. Huge dodge on Comfy, honestly. Oh my gosh, this is quite the wild game. I don't know if that was an optimal Calm Mind. I was just thinking they always sub there in Bleak Wind. Let's see if this is Sashed. Yeah, that's where the Sash was. Oh man, Glamora hanging on for an extra turn made this so much more annoying. <laughs> Now you can just hex Glastrier though. Does that KO? I wouldn't expect it to. I want to just draining kiss and heavy slam here. Okay, that's fine. Means Tornadus didn't protect. Really, really smart team. Like, I've played against Flutter Chiyu before, but for it to have Hex and Sub, I think is a very clever way to build this comp. And one, I've, ne I've never fought against a version like this before, so kudos. I just can't believe Glamora survived high horsepower. That was nuts. We have Water Pawn as the last one. My last leg's uncomfy. Still have Terra though. This Chi was the last one, yeah. Ugh. Huh. I feel like I should go Floral Healing here, Terra. Water, high horsepower. Okay, they don't tear. I mean, the Sash was committed on Torn, so I'm essentially here hoping that Glastrier survives the turn, knocks out Chiyu, and then it's a 2v1 against the Flutter main. Although I might still lose the 2v1, honestly, with Sub and Hex. They might just, like, Hex and Dark Pulse Glastrier here.
Yeah, does that KO? Oh, okay, it doesn't. And we don't flinch. Okay, so still a chance to win. That's good. I don't know who wins in the Flutter Ogre 1v1, honestly. Like, I feel like with Horn Leech and healing, that's valuable. Oh, we actually have one more turn with Comfy thanks to the um, leftovers. Wait, that's huge because it means I get an extra floral healing off here. Okay. I was surprised to not see Terra really at any point in this battle. I think there were a lot of opportunities to Terra from their end. Yep, they protect, but I get my guaranteed healing. Light screen's about to expire, though, which is the downside. It is a shame we don't get to heal the poison away from this. Okay. Comfy faints. So free switch in to free switch in to ogre. Light screen wears off. I mean, does hex KO? I'm not sure. Ogre's out. Uh, the other question is whether or not it's worth swords dancing. You shouldn't sub here. You should always hex Glastrier. Uh, Cudgel. I don't need a Horn Leech. I mean, it's either between Swords Dance or Cudgel. I think Cudgel is fine because I think it brings you under sub range. And then we just Heavy Slam. I could also protect here reading what they hex. I don't have no idea what Terra this is going to be. Like, I feel like a defensive Terra actually makes a lot of sense. Stellar? Wow. Okay. I mean, that's fine, right? Stellar Hex into Glastrier. What? Okay, that makes no sense to me, because you just faint to... Okay, we'll take it. Well, I guess it doesn't make a difference since Kajo actually got that knockout. Um, I see what they were going for. They are probably hoping that I would like predict that they would target Glastrier and make the read, and then knock out Ogre. Because um, if I protect Glastrier like I was talking about, you actually get the one-hit knockout onto Ogre Pawn, you win the game, because then you just, it's a 1v1 against Glastrier. But that was definitely an unexpected strategy. Um, but yeah, I just can't believe Glamora survived that. Uh, the Hex stuff is really cool. I think if Chiu had defensively Terran, maybe they could have won the game as well. If I flinch from Dark Pulse, that could have been really scary, but Light Screen saved us, right? Because it meant their damage output just wasn't that strong throughout the entirety of the battle. Okay, we've got Torner, Shrilla, Arch, Flutter, Hisu, and Ark. Arch is interesting. It's probably Rain Dance on Torn. Hisu and Ark probably banded. Um, I feel like our Arch should be able to do a lot of damage with Draco Meteor. I don't think this is a Moltres game. They have multiple resistances. It's a Sableye lead for sure. Maybe Sableye Ogre Pawn? Sableye Ogre, Sableye Arch, Sableye Glastrier, Comfy in the back. Uh, their Arch is a really big problem, actually, so our best response to it is our own Arch. So I think I'm going to go Sableye Arch, because otherwise I don't see very clear counterplay to it. I think Ogre is definitely brought in this game, and it's between Comfy Glastrier as the fourth. Glastrier is not that good into Arch, especially if it gets defense boosts. I mean, Comfy is really weak into it too, to, to be honest. I think I'll go Glastrier because it at least exerts more offensive pressure here. So the general game plan is to threaten their Arch out on as much as possible because I think we have a pretty big weakness to it. And... Um, it gets spooky though if they just Fairy Terra, but at least if they Fairy Terra can Flash Cannon. They are going to go Torn Arch, okay. I mean, I guess I don't mind this. Like, I think my approach here is just Light Screen and Focus Energy into Draco Meteor turn two. 
It could also be light screen, focus energy, protect to see if Arch Terra's and then go from there. But yeah, I actually think we have a really bad Arch Haladon matchup, so this is my best answer to it. We'll see if this solution works. I'm not sure it will. Even with Draco critting with the Salt Vest Arch, I'm not sure how much damage we do. Torrent switches. Okay. Into Fluttermane. I don't mind that. Probably trying to bait a Draco into that slot. Oh, it's Protect. Okay, you're not a Salt Vest, so that means... I've run into a lot of sturdy Archaladons with Power Herb Meteor Beam on these compositions, so I'm going to guess that's what my opponent has. The tower actually worked out really, really well for us. I'll take that. I'm actually going to down a Quash and Flash Cannon then, I think. Try to knock out Flutter here. I guess Quash Draco on Tar Child on also was maybe acceptable in this spot. And they could switch Flutter out. Not too much on their team can actually take Flash Cannon. Okay, I'm hoping this is Fairy Terra Arch. That would be awesome. Oh. It's been a while since I've run into defensive water flutter. That's not good. Great Terra. Great, great Terra. It's Electro Shot. Yep. Sorry, I said Meteor Beam earlier. Uh, I meant Electro Shot. <laughs> so, so used to Tornado Sklamora. Okay. I mean, the upside is I can just quash Draco next turn. Man, that does nothing. This is still going to take so much damage. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, and a special attack drop when it rains and pours. Uh, I mean, the upside at least Water Pong can deal with this. Uh, I'm going to... I guess the special attack drop actually doesn't matter at all because I just have infinite crits. I'm going to quash Draco Arch. Because I need to get that down to 1 HP. They could protect it and attack with Flutter, although that, that would be risky because then I can just quash Draco your Flutter. So I'm making a bet here that they are just going to attack with both Mons. Okay, good. I could have gone for the knockout into Flutter, but then I literally have no way to beat Archaladon. Oh, that Moonblast just did more than I expected. Wow. Uh, I thought I would survive that for sure. I just got rolled here completely. Uh, the problem here is my Archaladon slower than both of their Pokemon, so I can quash one slot. But yeah, it's uh, Sableye's not doing any damage, and defensive Terra Flutter is so good here. I think it's still possible to win those. I'm not going to give up, especially because now they're at minus one with Arch, and I have Sword Stance pressure with this. Okay. I think I'm going to need to make some big plays if I want to win this. So I'm going to just switch out and Sword Stance here, reading that they, like, yeah, switch out or Protect Flutter. That works, at least. But I'm still so far behind right now. And go to Rillaboom. Man, turn one was so perfect for me as well, but ah, uh, turn two was just a disaster. I think on turn two, I should have just focused my efforts on Archaladon, right? Because it's like, I, I think I got a little bit greedy. Essentially, I was like, oh, I have a free knockout on Flutter in front of me, but Archaladon is like, I kind of lost sight of the overall vision of this game, which is that Archaladon is the main issue anyway, right? I need to get damage onto it. I even identified it as a huge threat. In my eyes, I was just like, okay, like you're not going to do that much damage to me. If I knock out Flutter, I just accelerate the game immediately. 
And I don't think it's a crazy assumption because so many people run a Fairy Terra Flutter, especially with choice specs. Since I didn't see a booster energy, I was like, okay, it feels like it's probably specs here. Um, but if I had just ended up launching Draco onto our child on, that would have been down to one HP. Grass Terra would have been committed, and then this combo would have been nasty in the end game. So I think I kind of lost sight of the the vision a little bit, but eh, at least we did get boosted here. Okay. We're, we're, this is actually still totally winnable, so let's not give up. I still have Terra available as well. I'm going to Ice Gold Crash here. Cudgel. Mm, that maybe should have been Horn Leech, because I think Flutter comes back out here, but it's Torn. Okay. Wait, this is actually way more winnable than I realized. Okay. Uh, Sash makes things harder, because now you can Tailwind Woodhammer. But if I knock out Rillaboom, Ogre Pond literally wins the game, no? Because I just Terra it. They just Bleak win, okay. I mean, uh, it, we'll see if Ble does Bleak win Woodhammer KO Glastrier? I wouldn't expect it to, honestly. Man, this whole time I was just talking about how this game was lost, but like maybe they we're actually totally fine right now. I don't see how they deal with Water Ogre Pond at this point. You have three special attacks. Oh no, I see how they, it's Rain Dance Torn. You Rain Dance and then you Electro Shot me. But if you rain dance, it means you don't get tailwind up. Right? High horsepower you. Horn leech you. Yeah, so they do go for rain dance, but that means no tailwind, which is good. Oh, Arch is faster here. That's not good. Yeah, that's really bad. Wait, but this doesn't KO, right? Yeah. Hold on, we take so much less than I'm actually expecting. I wonder if Horn Leech High Horsepower onto Arch actually would have just gotten the KO there. I think we're actually... F oh, did I miss? Okay. That delay was really scary. Yeah, actually, if I doubled up on an arch there, I also would have just won the game. I feel like I just flustered myself so much in the beginning because I was like, what am I doing? But it's actually not too bad now. This being faster is just awkward. Who do I want to Terra? Probably you. They can't knock out both Mons here, right? Oh wait, I shouldn't be heavy slamming, whoops. High horsepower you. I think it's fine to just Horn Leech and... Yeah, you only knock out one of the two and then I just Quash plus KO whatever survives here. Okay. Right? I just bring out Sable and I just quash Cudgel. Wow, I thought this game was just completely doomed after how I played that early game with Archaladon, but uh, we found a way to win. Cool. I mean, yeah, like, Water Ogre Plum was just ridiculously good here, and the fact that I got a high horsepower off of Archaladon was enough damage to let our uh, Ogre could finish things off. Because Ogre had a really good matchup in the Torn and Water Flutter here, but obviously not good into Rilla and Arch. But they committed a lot of resources, and so that Swords Dance basically instantly got us back into the game. Light Screen wears off, no more terrain, but now I just bring out Sableye and we just Quash Cudgel. Cool. Quash you, Cudgel you. Okay, you're slowed down. And now this should just get the KO. Plus two in the rain, and you're at 10%. Nice. 
Oh, that's why you don't give up. Uh, I feel like I was, yeah, thinking the game was just immediately over when that turn Archaladon went down and Draco came out. But basically what we were able to take advantage of was my opponent clicking Draco Meteor multiple times. So their Archaladon's damage output was so lacking. Um, and then, yeah, getting that Swords Dance off with Flutter and then also getting Sableye out. So I had so much more offensive pressure, right? It went from like Sableye plus an Ogre Pond with no boost to an Ogre Pond at plus two with Glacier out next to it immediately. And Tornadus was not something that was exerting a lot of offensive pressure either. Um, I think if my opponent had launched just Woodhammer into Glacier, for example, instead of into the Ogre Pond, this game probably would have been a one game for them. But because they targeted Ogre and I was just able to knock out Rillaboom, that was absolutely huge. All right, it's been kind of a crazy win streak. Uh, whoa. We have fought some wild teams, huh? Rillaboom, Weezing, Titar, Chestnut, Moltres, and Comfy. Okay. I don't even know where to start with this. What What is going on? They have regular Kanto Moltres, we have Galarian Moltres, they have Chestnut and Tyranitar and Weezing. Uh, abilities being shut down here means no Prankster on Sableye. Glastrier doesn't get boosts. I have to really worry about Will-O-Wisp from Weezing, I think. This definitely feels like a Archaladon game. Sableye, Archaladon, Comfy to heal up. I don't know if I want to bring either phys like any physical attackers because of wheezing. And I do think my Moltres is good here. But what in the heck is that going on? <laughs> okay. Uh, Chestnut is really the wild card here. I've such little experience fighting against it, but it's really T-Tar. Okay. This feels really good for my lead, no? Uh, I don't even need to protect Arch here. Like, let's just focus energy, reflect immediately. Okay. T-Tar switches. To... Oh, and then they're just going to Woodhammer Sableye, aren't you? Wait, that's really smart. Does that KO me? I love that play by them. Oh! <laughs> that was one of the most creative solutions I've seen to beating this team before. I mean, we obviously haven't lost yet, but that is... Uh, so cool. Wow. I still don't mind, because, like, the main thing is, like, my opponent's not doing damage right now this turn, right? So it's like... We can just pivot this out into Comfy or Moltres. And I can just start spamming Draco. I am down to target Rillaboom. I don't think Weezing's actually that scary here. That was sick, though. You turn out, okay? Uh, maybe it's still fine to target Weezing, but I figured Weezing maybe could protect her, whereas Rillaboom protecting seems way less likely. That's regular Moltres. No, that's Chestnut. Well, that was a weird turn. I would have much rather they hit Willis and I hit Draco then <laughs> for both of us to miss. Um, but not a terrible turn, right? I don't know. Like, I feel like our Chaladon is just so strong into them. I'm down to just launch Draco into this plot. Oh, that was a huge miss, though, to be honest, because I think, like, Weezing pivots out now, okay. Um, I was gonna say, like, I actually think they have very little Archaladon counterplay, and Chestnut's one of their answers, but we would have done over 50% to it. 
with Draco. They're just spiky shit. Okay, free nasty plot. They're playing so passively. Like, I don't know how they're going to ever deal damage right now. I think with this next turn, I can just double protect, bait out their fake out, and then go from there. I don't see much reason to not do that. I think they should... They need to pivot in Tyranitar at this point, but... Like, this is the thing. Weezing is such a liability for them, if anything, because it's a Pokemon that just doesn't do damage. So, I'm happy to just protect both Mons right now and see what they want to do. But, like, we are very set up right now. Okay. Fire Terra. On Chestnut. That's fine. Protect with both. Fake out. What is Chestnut gonna do here? Like, superpower? What? I was unaware with your game. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, now I feel even worse missing that Draco meter. That was such a bad miss. Hmm. Speed-wise, do you even outpace us here? Like, I think I want to just Draco Wrath. Okay, they glide, which activates Berserk. I'm, I'm really confused. <laughs> I, I just don't know anything about Chestnut, honestly. I used it once. Does this KO? Yeah, I... <laughs> It's cool in theory, but it's just slow and doesn't do enough damage. So as long as I don't miss Draco, I feel like they just spent so many resources to get to this point. Oh, but I miss. Uh, maybe that should have been Flash Cannon. Yeah. But Terrain disappears. So what do you even do? We don't have Pryo anymore, so I just Flash Cannon into Lorilla slot. Wrath. Yeah. Whatever's coming out gets knocked out now. It's T-Tar. Which means now you take sand damage this turn as well. Spiky shield, grassy glide, belly drum. Huh. Fascinating. Actually, I might not knock out Tyranitar here, but I wouldn't even mind not knocking it out. Yeah, because now it forces you to make a switch into Rillaboom. Policy? Whoa. Okay. Yeah, if I lose this game, it's on me. Like, double Draco miss is something I could have honestly prevented uh, if, I, if I just click Flash Cannon. Mm, you probably just glide. I mean, I think it's fine to just Flash Cannon Fiery Wrath here. Yeah, what? <laughs> okay, they don't switch either, so that's just a double KO. Huh. Surprised to not at least see T Tar go into Rillaboom and glide into Moltres there. But maybe they're like, oh, I got my weakness policy boost. But yeah. I think the problem for my opponent in this game was that their Pokemon are just slower. So they never were exerting that much offensive pressure, even after Belly Drum. And like, plus six Grassy Glide is not that scary when you have two things that just resist Grassy Glide, right? So it's cool. Like the, the way they denied Sableye early was cool, but then they just had nothing for this combo. And yeah, like, this is the fundamental problem of Weezing, which is that it is so, so passive. Right, because you run, like, Sludge Bomb, Willow's Taunt, Protect. But, really cool team. Uh, we can just Flash Cannon you, Wrath. 
Yeah. Wow. Okay. We have run into really interesting comps throughout the course of this episode, I gotta say. But, uh, yeah, we'll take it. I think, uh, this team is really hard to fight against because there's so many unexpected surprises, and uh, a lot of those surprises definitely showed here. Honestly, was not expecting to go on such a crazy win streak, uh, so I'll play one more and see if we can close out the episode with just entirely wins. But, uh, okay. I feel like by saying that, I've just jinxed myself, so it should be interesting. Rilla, Instant Bolt, Flutter, Rock Ogre Pond, and Urshifu. Rock Ogre Pond's the main thing that's really intriguing there, in my opinion. Not a Moltres game, given the Bolt. When I see Bolt, I normally default towards Arch. Uh, Ogre Pond, I think, is actually really scary here. Being able to redirect is not great. Comfy is actually okay into Arch as well. Or, sorry, into Bolt as well. But um, they could Fairy Terra, Calm Mind, and then it becomes really annoying for us. Wow, I actually really want Glastrier, but I think... Um, Rock Ogre Palm becomes kind of annoying. I want Comfy. Ah, uh, I, I want to bring Glastrier so much. If they didn't have Rock Ogre Palm, I think it's an immediate bring, but Rock Ogre Palm is so good into Glastrier because you can just Rock Ivy Cudgel us before I Terra, and if I Terra and you have a Grass-type attack, then that's really bad. I don't know. This is mainly a wild card because of the Ogre Pond. I think other things to look out for. I don't know what kind of Raging Bolt set it is. I lost against a Life Orb set. It's instant of Rock Pond. Okay. Uh, I think this is fine. Reflect. Focus Energy. This lead is awesome because it's like you don't even want to click fake out into arch, right? People are normally going to want to like parting shot into it. And I don't care about parting shot because of focus energy. So having a lead that really doesn't mind going up against fake out in this format is amazing. I'm mainly curious about Ogre Pond's moveset. I don't really know what to expect from it. Normally people use Rock Ogre Pond for Trick Room teams. Where you go follow me, set up Trick Room safely, they don't fake out, which makes sense. Knock off here, I didn't even think about, uh, but that would be really bad. Oh, superpower immediately, okay. Focus energy up, but... Okay, I'm fine eating Parting Shot here because I don't care about stat drops. However, this means now you can bring out a really offensive attacker like Fluttermane, right? Imagine you bring out Fluttermane, you just Fairy Terra, Dazzling Gleam, Superpower again. If Flutter comes out, my solution is Quash. Ah, uh, but they could follow me. Oh, if it's follow me, then you just follow me Fairy Terra Gleam. So I think I need a light screen here. And protect. I'm hoping they knock out Sayboy here, because then I can bring out Comfy and then heal. They didn't Terra. Oh. Did they just superpower Gleam? I totally could have gone Qu Quash Flash Cannon there. It's fine. They Moonblast. Superpower, yo. Okay. Uh, yeah. Quash. Flash Cannon. I mean, now that I've set up Light Scream, I'm less worried, but if you end up just going Fairy Terra, follow me Moonblast, and your specs, and Arch Faints, that's really bad. And that's what's coming my way. Oh. Surprised they didn't just do this last turn. Yeah. 
Smart of them to not knock out Sableye. Like, I think Sableye getting knocked out there and giving me a free switch in puts them in a bad spot. Oh. Wait a minute. We're fine. Unless Flash Cannon doesn't KO, which could be the case depending on its bulk on Flutter. Nice. Yeah, I think they just didn't respect the option of Quash either turn, which is part of what makes this team so strong. Sableye and best of one is a nightmare mon to fight against. Bolt comes out. Okay. Oh, booster bolt. Huh. Uh, the last one's Insin. Bolt is really the only Pokemon that can win the game for them right now. We've set up both screens. I could definitely still lose this game. So you don't want to get too carried away yet. I don't mind switching to Comfy right now and going for Protect. Okay, they switch. That's fine. We have higher prio with Comfy. Um, I can also think about winning this game with Calm Mind Comfy at this point, since the Terra has been committed on their end. I think if you're making this play, you have to be protecting Bolt, right? Because otherwise you're vulnerable to Quash Draco double up on that slot. Are they slower Bolt and protecting? Wow. What? That's really surprising. I guess they're just trying to go all in with Thunderclap KOing, but I don't even think that would with Light Screen being up there, huh? Okay, well, I'm gonna go Floral Healing right now into this. And Draco. Yeah, Comfy's out in a really good spot right now. I mean, your only play here, I think, really is fake out Arch and Draco it. And just try to knock it out. But if you end up committing Draco, then you're at minus two. And you're in a really tough slot with um, Bolt. Yeah, there's fake out. I also don't think Draco KOs with Light Screen being up. I'm not sure. Oh, it's also just Dragon Pulse. Okay, nice. Yeah, that does not do very much. Heal up and Draco now. I think the bolt probably protects here, to be honest, but it's fine. Like, if you don't protect, we just win the game, basically. And if you protect, so be it. They actually hard switch in sin, okay. Like, the reason I don't care if they protect here is because I'm clicking floral healing anyway, right? Cool. This is such a fun combo. Oh, I missed though. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, if the Draco connects there, the game's just over for sure. This makes the game a little bit more interesting. Plus three five defense. I'm happy to just keep healing. Cause it's like Ogre Pond is a non-factor at this point against Arch, right? Uh, and with Floral Healing here, like, how are you ever going to deal enough damage to win? Yeah, they just caught you. Okay, that's fine. Like, the only win con really is Bolt getting a critical hit Dragon Pulse. Or what they needed to do was stall out Light Screen, but if Dragon Pulse is your only means of offense, then it's still not even KOing me. Cool. Okay, and now you have two physical attackers. There's really nothing you can do against Starch. Yeah. Um, down to just break this thing's sturdy. And Flash Cannon. 
Yeah, I mean, I think the key turn in this game was my opponent just gave up Flutter the way they did. Um, I was expecting follow me from Ogre. And if Ogre had follow me, which I'd be surprised if it didn't, but if it had it um, and they just went for it, I think Moonblast just probably KOs Arch anyway. Uh, and even if it doesn't, you get me super low. But basically, because we were able to just knock out Flutter for free and get Comfy out, uh, we turned what was looking like a pretty scary situation into one where our Trialodon could just like, completely dominate. But this thing is absolutely nuts when you have the right support around it. You just need to get the proper positioning. Anyway, that was a really crazy streak of games. I am amazed at how powerful the team felt, and it took me a few games of practice to really get the hang of it because there's so many different modes, but I feel like we got to showcase really so much of what makes this team fun. Uh, Glastra had an amazing game, our Chalodon had multiple amazing games, Galarian Moltres had amazing games, Comfy put in a lot of work with healing. The only thing I feel like I didn't really get to showcase very much was Calm Mind Comfy being able to set up multiple boosts, but uh, I think that's probably the hardest to execute out of any of the sets on this team, and Sableye was just absolutely incredible as well. So yeah, thank you so much as always for watching. I think this is easily one of the most creative teams I've tried out in the format, and it is no, no joke and uh, really difficult to play against because people just have no idea what to expect from it. So yeah, had a blast showcasing this one. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, and I'll see you all soon. All right, peace.